Brussels. I feel miserable and powerless, this man says. I have never experienced anything like it. Authorities say this is the biggest police operation in Munich in a decade. The entire transport system in the city is shut down. This is the second attack in Germany in less than a week. And I think the, the atmosphere one year ago and today is totally different. A police spokesperson says, quote, the shooting looks like a terror attack. Nonetheless, uh, Europe has become a continent that really, uh, there's a growing culture of fear here. And there's a lot of fear uh, that a new era is beginning in Europe, where uh, these attacks are just going to become more frequent. It's becoming a pattern all too familiar now. An individual, often with a petty criminal background, wages an attack on civilians. Following all the leads that they have, and obviously taking every precaution uh, and in doing so, they have essentially shut down the city of Munich, uh, uh, told people not to go outside. Now, over in Turkey, that country woke up this Thursday to find itself locked in a three-month state of emergency. Within hours, the French president was promising extra powers to the security services. L'état d'urgence. A state of emergency will be proclaimed, which means that certain public places will be closed, traffic can be stopped, and searches ordered throughout France. And they say, you know, across the world, there's a temptation to take a major security turn, if you could call it that way, uh, and a security turn that, you know, would curb other freedoms. But human rights groups and lawyers say that people's freedoms are being abused. The state of emergency worries me, mainly because I see it as a questioning of democracy and of fundamental rights. So far, the powers have been extended three times. With the French president promising to use everything to fight terrorism, the state of emergency is starting to feel like the new normal. You know, I, I'm, I'm, it's funny, I, I don't know why I'm going to say this. I'm actually working with somebody, and um, and because I'm personally interested in this, and I mean, it's going to sound you know weird that you know TMZ. We we talk about privacy issues all the time all because the time. there it's are zones of the privacy, and this is something that Congress is getting involved in. Um, and I know this because I'm kind of in working too with with some of them because they're what they're wondering with technology and all the things that go on in the world. Where is privacy? in the what world. You Where privacy? is it now? And you know, the fact that people are allowed to have phones in the gym, but these phones all have cameras, you know, it's just one of the elements at, of at, at this new point, world order. Teachers at an all-female school in Sydney have been told to stop referring to their students as girls, ladies or women. A leading Sydney girls school is being investigated for political correctness. The Daily Telegraph is reporting today. Teachers at Cheltenham Girls High have been told to stop calling the students girls, ladies or women. Instead they have to use gender neutral terms, I guess like, you know, good morning humans, <laughs> female humans. Uh, News Corp reports that teachers were told they would be breaking the law and considered homophobic if they didn't support the decision. Honestly, this is taking PC to the politically, being mm. politically correct, sorry, to the absolute ridiculous. How can you teach a classroom, you know, what doesn't actually happen in the real world. For me, language is something that there's a problem when it is used. It goes to motive. If it's used in a discriminatory manner, then we have a problem. But using words like girls, I call all my friends guys, crew, yeah. gang. Do you know what I mean? I'm not talking to them, speaking mm. them as though a crew or they're a gang. I just mm. think it's ridiculous. And it's laughing in the face of what happens in the real world. Yeah. Completely. I mean, I'm all for gender equality. Yeah. And I think it's great that it starts in school, that you shouldn't, at a girls' school, they should be taught, you're not a second-class citizen mm. and you shouldn't feel uh, put in a little box because you're a girl. But that doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge the fact that you are female. Mm. And using words like women, ladies, girls, whatever, I mean, that's just a, a, a biological description. That's mm. not... A a negative. What we should be saying to girls is it's okay that you're a woman. We don't have to pretend you're not a woman. Gender neutral looks are all the rage at many fashion brands and it seems this isn't a trend. Unisex may be here to stay. Let's start with how quickly unisex fashion has caught on lately. Tell us some of the bigger brands now embracing this look. Really big brands. Zara has um, now go, is going into its second season with its unisex or, or, or gender free or genderless or ungendered, whatever word you want to use with Some it. Some smaller brands, Beth Knowles out of, of out of London, Dr. Denim out of Sweden. This really is a global phenomenon, by the way.
After five years of delays, a national education law will finally be implemented in California. It includes teaching history of the LGBT rights movement as early as second grade. Covering Brevard County, the school board's anti-discrimination policy includes sexual orientation and now gender identity. If you were watching Eyewitness News at 4, you know the controversial change passed narrowly. Unfortunately, today's discussion on updating equal opportunity and or non-discrimination policies would allow a boy to blatantly lie in order to go into the girls' locker room to lust after them, which is precisely what the slaveholders did. No girl should worry about, or worse, feel the probing eyes of a lusting boy in her locker room. All children, especially the vulnerable like our LGBT students, deserve to be in a safe free zone from bullying. No child goes to school to be judged, bullied, and call abominations, sinner, sinners, and other hateful rhetoric. The NBA's All-Star Weekend brings the best in basketball and can bring the host city upwards of $100 million in business. But next year, it won't be in Charlotte. In a statement, the NBA said, We do not believe we could successfully host our All-Star festivities in the climate created by HB2. Governor Pat McCrory signed the law in March. It blocks certain protections for LGBT people and mandates which public restrooms transgender people can use. Today, the governor stood firm. In any decision I make, I pick common sense values to protect our children in our schools uh, over money. It affects everybody, not just downtown city, but the gas station, the convenience stores, uh, Everything down here. We lost business because of it. Marino Valley firefighter Eric Hilly is so passionate about supporting the fallen officers of Baton Rouge and Dallas police, he bought this flag and added a blue line to it shortly after the shootings. It's a tough time right now in this country for law enforcement. That's why Eric says he placed the flag on the back of the Cal Fire Riverside County fire engine he works on. When division chiefs heard about the flag and blue stripe on the door, they told Eric to take them down. He says right now the country is dealing with unusual violence directly aimed at first responders. And we felt that the method uh, and the flag that was displayed was uh, a threat to the firefighters. They, they ask questions that sound a little bit um, like science fiction, but uh, many of them are becoming science fact uh, very quickly. Do you think, I mean, you, you're actually uh, pushing, you know, the science forward. Do you think the consequences are well understood, the sort of Absolutely leveling not. of the plate? Yeah, okay. I don't think we understand. I mean, luckily for us, we sort of sidestep in um, regenerative medicine. We get a chance to sidestep this issue for a little while longer because it's still a bit of a hypothetical question. You know, can we grow um, body parts and that are... Right now, we're just trying to catch up to what nature can do. Mm. And so for a while, we get the chance to just, I think similar to people in AI, to get a, a chance to say, oh, we're just trying to catch up to what nature can do. Um, but eventually, it's going to catch up to us, and we'll have to start answering these questions. You know, Do we want to enhance and do more than, than what nature can do? It turns out that the really intelligent people are the only ones who actually get the boost. And um, suddenly there is kind of a superpower that you could have just for a small few. Uh, that would be really remarkable. It would be contra everything we've learned so far, but it would be remarkable and it might change the conversation right. somewhat. But I think, from my perspective, what I'd rather do, rather than putting the brakes on it, is increase access and availability so Even that people... Even if that entails a little bit of creative destruction. Well, um, why would it cause creative, creative destruction? destruction? Now, one of the things that I have learned about Hillary Clinton is that one of her heroes, her mentors, 
was Saul Alinsky. And her senior thesis was about Saul Alinsky. This was someone that she greatly admired and that affected all of her philosophies subsequently. Now, interestingly enough, let me tell you something about Saul Alinsky. He wrote a book called Rules for Radicals. On the dedication page, it acknowledges Lucifer, the original radical who gained his own kingdom. Now think about that. This is a nation where our founding document, the Declaration of Independence, talks about certain inalienable rights that come from our creator. This is a nation where our Pledge of Allegiance says we are one nation under God. This is a nation. This is a nation where every coin in our pocket and every bill in our wallet says, in God we trust. The secular progressive agenda is antithetical to the principles of the founding of this nation. And if we continue to allow them to take God out of our lives, God will remove himself from us. We will not be blessed and our nation will go down the tubes. And Thomas Jefferson said that we would reach this point because we the people would not be paying attention and it would allow the government to grow, to expand and to metastasize and to try to rule us. But he said, before we turn into something else, we the people would recognize what was going on what we were about to lose and we would rise up and we would take control of our nation and I say now is the time for us to rise up and take America back.